Hi and welcome back to yet another video. This is the fourth episode of the story about the time when Naruto was trained by 3rd Uzukage when he activated a Keke Genkai that allowed him to control blue flames. After you've finished watching, please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Let's get started. Naruto awoke to a strange place. It was a simple forest line. Confusion written on his face, as he stepped through the trees, he found himself in a clearing, a large circle pond sat in the middle, a small rock seemed to stretch from the mainland to just hanging over the river. Naruto stepped through the tree line and the color seemed to drain from the surrounding area. The whole setting turned into a deep black and white. Naruto frowned slightly and looked up into the now clear sky. Four orbs seemed to spin around in a ring in the sky. Two orbs were plain white, one was a purple color, a rippled pattern spread across the entire circle. Naruto immediately recognized the Rinnegan, his original one. The other was just a plain blood red. Naruto frowned slightly as he moved towards the rock that was sticking out over the large pond. He sighed slightly as he stood on the edge of the rock, his eyes still lingering on the sky. Eerie isn't it came a deep rumbling voice Naruto had become familiar with. Naruto watched with disorientation as the world seemed to move. He took a step forward as the world tipped. The river ended up as a mirror, the large river seemed like a gate into some horrible dimension. Naruto looked up and blanched the trees were acting as a ring. He turned around on his spot on the stone and realized he was staring at the sky. His stomach lurched from the dizzying world. He heard a deep chuckle. He turned slowly and watched as his reflection in the mirror do the same. He felt an honest jolt of fear shoot through his body. His reflection had an evil smirk, sharp canines, blood red eyes, and the pupils were silver slits. His hair was much longer and tied into nine thin strips. The horns were changed to ear-like shapes. The reflection licked a drop of blood off of its thumb, its smirk growing wider. Who are you? asked Naruto, his face betraying his calm voice. The reflection chuckled. Naruto then took notice of the reflection in the water. Everything was burning, black, red and blue fire consumed the entire world. Two orbs were burning, pulsing. One was bright ethereal blue. The other was plain red fire. His eyes were drawn to the reflection of himself. It seemed to turn and look at him. Come now Naruto, you don't recognize me said the deep voice and Naruto raised an eyebrow as there was a flash of the QB behind the reflection. Q said Naruto calmly, the reflection nodded and chuckled slightly. Don't worry, I was as confused as you were. I started off in a cramped cage, only to be given a little world of my own to play in and do as I please, said the QB. Naruto raised an eyebrow. You got me here to tell me this? Questioned Naruto, the QB snarled and banged both of his fists against the pond. It rippled and made a loud rumble but did not budge. No insolent brat, I am just saying be careful, for this to be happening already. The QB trailed off, Naruto raised an eyebrow. You have seen a world like this, before? Asked Naruto, the QB grumbled slightly. Three times, but only one that looked exactly like this said the QB. Naruto nodded and raised an eyebrow. Are you going to elaborate? Asked Naruto, the QB chuckled. Maybe later, by the way. Why do you call me Q? Asked QB. Naruto sighed and turned around. You are the only constant in my life. You have helped since I was young. Though for your own back I understand. But still you helped me get stronger. As such you are family said Naruto. QB looked at Naruto's back with a strange look on his face. QB looked at the monochrome world of Naruto and wondered what it would be like to venture into that world. He could see it slowly creeping through the water. QB was a beast of pure malevolence, hatred incarnate. But this boy, his emotions, so muted. I can't help but be swallowed by them, I fear it. Losing my emotion, losing my hatred. Kyuubi thought to himself, Naruto called him family, the human attachment. Kyuubi hated it. But when he looked at Naruto, at the loneliness that seemed to echo through the black and white, Kyuubi turned and looked at his world of red, fire and corruption. He knew it would take a lot to overpower Naruto. Naruto awoke to a strange place. It was a simple forest line. Confusion written on his face, as he stepped through the trees, he found himself in a clearing, a large circle pond sat in the middle, a small rock seemed to stretch from the mainland to just hanging over the river. Naruto stepped through the tree line and the color seemed to drain from the surrounding area. The whole setting turned into a deep black and white. Naruto frowned slightly and looked up into the now clear sky. Four orbs seemed to spin around in a ring in the sky. Two orbs were plain white, one was a purple color, a rippled pattern spread across the entire circle. Naruto immediately recognized the Rinnegan, his original one. The other was just a plain blood red. Naruto frowned slightly as he moved towards the rock that was sticking out over the large pond. 
he sighed slightly as he stood on the edge of the rock, his eyes still lingering on the sky. Eerie as it came a deep rumbling voice Naruto had become familiar with. Naruto watched with disorientation as the world seemed to move. He took a step forward as the world tipped. The river ended up as a mirror, the large river seemed like a gate into some horrible dimension. Naruto looked up and blanched the trees were acting as a ring. He turned around on his spot on the stone and realized he was staring at the sky. His stomach lurched from the dizzying world. He heard a deep chuckle. He turned slowly and watched as his reflection in the mirror do the same. He felt an honest jolt of fear shoot through his body. His reflection had an evil smirk, sharp canines, blood red eyes, and the pupils were silver slits. His hair was much longer and tied into nine thin strips. The horns were changed to ear-like shapes. The reflection licked a drop of blood off of its thumb, its smirk growing wider. Who are you? asked Naruto, his face betraying his calm voice. The reflection chuckled. Naruto then took notice of the reflection in the water. Everything was burning, black, red and blue fire consumed the entire world. Two orbs were burning, pulsing. One was bright ethereal blue. The other was plain red fire. His eyes were drawn to the reflection of himself. It seemed to turn and look at him. Come now Naruto, you don't recognize me said the deep voice and Naruto raised an eyebrow as there was a flash of the QB behind the reflection. Q said Naruto calmly, the reflection nodded and chuckled slightly. Don't worry, I was as confused as you were. I started off in a cramped cage, only to be given a little world of my own to play in and do as I please, said the QB. Naruto raised an eyebrow. You got me here to tell me this? Questioned Naruto, the QB snarled and banged both of his fists against the pond. It rippled and made a loud rumble but did not budge. No insolent brat, I am just saying be careful, for this to be happening already. The QB trailed off, Naruto raised an eyebrow. You have seen a world like this, before? Asked Naruto, the QB grumbled slightly. Three times, but only one that looked exactly like this said the QB. Naruto nodded and raised an eyebrow. Are you going to elaborate? Asked Naruto, the QB chuckled. Maybe later, by the way, why do you call me Q? Asked QB. Naruto sighed and turned around. You are the only constant in my life. You have helped since I was young. Though for your own back I understand, but still you helped me get stronger. As such you are family said Naruto. QB looked at Naruto's back with a strange look on his face. QB looked at the monochrome world of Naruto and wondered what it would be like to venture into that world. He could see it slowly creeping through the water. Kyuubi was a beast of pure malevolence, hatred incarnate. But this boy, his emotions, so muted. I can't help but be swallowed by them, I fear it. Losing my emotion, losing my hatred. Kyuubi thought to himself, Naruto called him family, the human attachment. Kyuubi hated it. But when he looked at Naruto, at the loneliness that seemed to echo through the black and white, Kyuubi turned and looked at his world of red, fire and corruption. He knew it would take a lot to overpower Naruto's emotions. The boy was the epitome of calm and serenity, QB would silently accept Naruto's family bond, but he would remind Naruto, he was the nine-tailed fox. Naruto turned and smiled serenely. Q, I need to wake up now okay? Said Naruto. The QB sneered. Do whatever, like I care said the QB. Naruto smiled slightly and stepped over the edge of the rock, QB doing the same. The world flipped back to its normal angle. QB took one last look in the pond. Their worlds are so similar. He was dangerous, I hope this boy is stronger QB thought. Naruto awoke with a start, he sat bolt up, his head moving to look to his left. He spotted the window in the night sky. A small smile touched his calm face. He could hear the voices of his team muted by the distance. Naruto moved to sit up, his bare feet touching the solid wood floor. He stood and fixed his belt that had come undone, he zipped up his t-shirt and looked around for his blade. Panic shot through him that was until he heard a bump coming from the door on his right. Naruto walked slowly to the door, the thumping becoming more erratic. Throwing open the door, a young boy came running out screaming charging at him with the blade. Naruto simply caught the tip of the tanto in between his two fingers, his glare falling onto the child. The child gave a whimper. Inari, I told you not to disturb, said a woman as she opened the door, but her voice stopped with a gasp. Naruto turned to look at her, his glare not shifting. The women took in her son who was shivering in fear, the blade clutched in his hands tightly, the sheath discarded near the wardrobe. I had just, said Inari but Naruto quickly snapped his attention back to the kid. Naruto deftly plucked the blade out, of the kid's hands. He ignored him as he walked around and picked up the sheath and slid the blade home. 
Please don't touch this said Naruto calmly, the women glared at her young son. Inari out she said, Inari quickly dashed out of the room. The women looked at Naruto apologetically. It's fine said Naruto raising a hand, the women smiled slightly. My father was right about you cold and indifferent on the outside. But that knowledge in your eyes, you look older than your years said the women with a small smile, Naruto just sighed as he stood with his back to the women. HN he said simply, the women sighed and left the room, closing the door softly. Naruto looked down at the blade, he unsheathed it and blinked as he noticed the black fox carved into the blade. I never noticed, I don't know why it's affecting me. It's not anything special Naruto thought to himself. Is it the reminder of what you have lost said the unexpected voice of Sasuke. Naruto turned slightly, his cool face gave Sasuke a raised eyebrow. I don't see what you mean said Naruto simply the blade clutched in his hand. I remember the old you so loud and annoying. But also headstrong, I remember my mother smiling sadly and saying you were the epitome of the will of fire. My father actually smiled a small smile that day, for you. He hadn't smiled at me in years, yet you, some lowly orphan, got a smile. When they were killed I, I was so lost, I didn't know who to go to, I thought. Nobody knew what I was going through nobody understood. The old Hokage offered to arrange me a playmate, a person to be my friend. When he said you my father's smile flashed in my head, I hated it, said Sasuke, Naruto turned and raised an eyebrow higher. Sasuke was just spilling his life story, when Naruto hadn't asked for it. And? Why does this matter? asked Naruto, Sasuke scowled slightly. I don't know, I mean, you are the last of you clan right? Sabuza said things about your family, me and Sakura heard them. Kakashi is brushing at the answers. So I want to know, who are you? asked Sasuke. Naruto smirked slightly. Please, you think that just because you share a bit of your past, that I am going to suddenly open up and tell you everything said Naruto. Sasuke stood there and glared slightly. Where did the idiot go? Asked Sasuke, Naruto smirked again. Where did you go Sasuke, when your clan was wiped out, where did you go? Asked Naruto. Sasuke scowled slightly. He knew it was true. He remembered through the hazy memories when he was happier, smiling and attempting to make friends. He then remembered Naruto being the same, loud, always smiling even though parents and teachers belittled him. I hid murmured Sasuke, Naruto felt his eyes slide open. He hadn't expected Sasuke to answer. I'm doing the opposite Sasuke, I hid in fear. I didn't want people to see the real me, the calm, almost emotionless one. My intelligence was hidden against my will, but the point is Sasuke, people, change, you can hold testament to that fact. You were kind, then you turned into a psycho wanting to kill for revenge, said Naruto. Sasuke couldn't help the flinch that went down his spine at the way Naruto spat revenge. I need to kill him it's my duty said Sasuke. Naruto glared icily. Nobody asked you to do it, I don't remember the mission details being released to a seven-year-old brat. You made it your personal vendetta, I'm pretty sure people would prefer it if you gained up the ranks. Rebuilt your family in spite of everything that has happened, said Naruto simply, Sasuke glared. What would you know? You never had a family, said Sasuke, Naruto shrugged. I may not have had a family, but I understand more about revenge than you do. I could easily burn the village to the ground and be justified in doing so. But I won't because people I love live in that village, it is their home therefore I will protect it with my all, said Naruto, Sasuke stood staring at the floor. W.Y. Whispered Sasuke, Naruto just sighed and brushed his hair out of his eyes. Why what? Asked Naruto, Sasuke just glared at the floor, Naruto shrugged and putting his blade on the bed he turned and walked out of the door. Sasuke just stared at the floor, his whole life was being called into question. Was he wrong in wanting revenge? Naruto sat sipping his tea quietly at the table, his calm gaze wandered around the room, Sasuke was thoughtful, Sakura was worried, her eyes kept flashing to Sasuke, Kakashi was just sat reading, though Naruto knew he was paying close attention to the atmosphere. The civilian family Tazuna and Tsunami sat with questioning gazes on their face. Kakashi-sensei, I think you should tell Naruto about Sabuza said Sakura. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Kakashi gave a sigh. Basically, I am going to be training the three of you. Sabuza used a fake hunter nin to get away. The hunter nin put him in a death-like state. Which means he'll be out for a week said Kakashi. Naruto nodded seriously anything else, asked Naruto, Sakura frowned slightly Kakashi-sensei says that whilst we are here, we should investigate the situation further, things are worse since Tazuna left, apparently Gato lost some partners who did work for him, one was a missing nin from Konoha said Sakura, Naruto raised an eyebrow, Kakashi sighed. 
Shinto Taro Ma said Kakashi, Naruto felt his eyes narrow slightly. Ah him said Naruto calmly, Sakura raised an eyebrow. You know him said Sakura, Naruto sighed, the teacup inches from his lips, his eyes closed. Yes, I was the one who killed him and his crew said Naruto simply, he sipped his tea whilst Tazuna choked slightly and Tsunami placed a hand against her chest. Kakashi nodded and Sakura sat with a wide mouth, Sasuke was quiet, Naruto freezing on the mission made sense to him now. It doesn't matter muttered a little voice, everyone paused and looked at Inari who was shaking with anger. And why is that asked Naruto, Inari, glared his tiny child glare. Because Gato is stronger than anyone yelled Inari, Naruto smirked coldly. Really then the little civilian man is able to outfight someone like Sasuke Uchiha, a prodigy among our peers said Naruto. Sasuke was surprised at the praise, while Sakura nodded seriously. He is stronger than all of you, you are all just a bunch of kids said Inari. Naruto put his cup down softly, and stood, walking towards Inari, Naruto's face was blank. He poked his finger against Inari's head. Sasuke felt his blood run cold. Not now Sasuke echoed his voice, he looked at Naruto's calm face, a shiver running through his spine. Calm down brat, we are no ordinary kids said Naruto, his tone happy. Inari poked his forehead, his eyes wide with shock. Naruto turned and looked at Kakashi Sasuke sat with a glare on his face. And Naruto is just like him, it's like he is doing it on purpose thought Sasuke, he looked at Naruto and almost saw his nightmare come to reality. I'm going into town sensei, do some research said Naruto simply, Kakashi nodded, Naruto walked up the stairs, going to grab his socks and boots. Sasuke stood sharply and turned and walked up the stairs without saying a word. He watched as Naruto raised an eyebrow as he was sat on the bed pulling on a boot. Why did you do that asked Sasuke, Naruto just sighed. It seemed like the easiest way to deal with the brat. Why? Somebody do it to you? Asked Naruto with a shrug, Sasuke nodded woodenly. H. He. My brother said Sasuke, Naruto frowned. Sasuke, no matter what he has done, he's still blood. Perhaps you should search for answers instead of killing off the only truth you will ever know said Naruto. Sasuke scowled. How dot how did you know asked Sasuke, Naruto smiled slightly. You think I spent all that time with the Hokage and never heard the whispers? Said Naruto. Sasuke scowled. Naruto didn't know what he was thinking, but he pulled Sasuke in a hug. And what? But Sasuke felt his heart contract, sure Naruto's hug was awkward cold, much like Naruto's expression. Sasuke, I know it hurts, you lost everything. But just know as a friend I will help you any way I can said Naruto simply. Sasuke heard his brother's voice echo through his head. If you want to receive these eyes, you have to kill your best friend echoed his voice, Sasuke shook his head as Naruto pulled away. Now that that is over, wanna come into town with me said Naruto. Sasuke nodded slightly and followed Naruto silently. Both walking towards the ruined village of Nami no Kuni the two boys stood back to back, Naruto stood with his hands in his pockets, his red hair blowing in the breeze, his fringe covered his eyes, blocking them from the assailant's view. Sasuke was in a slight crouch a growl slipping through his lips. Whose smart idea was it to leave without weapons? Whispered Sasuke harshly, Naruto just stood focused on the ring of men surrounding them. You are a ninja deal with it said. Naruto just as harshly, Naruto watched as the man threw a heavy punch towards his head, Naruto dodged to the side, and with a leap a hand latched onto the man's shoulder using momentum Naruto charged his body with fire, and flipped over the man, as Naruto landed, the guy bent backwards horribly due to Naruto's height compared to his own. Naruto then simply lifted the man as if he weighed nothing and launched him into the side of one of the buildings. Sasuke heard the crash and felt Naruto stand, back behind him. Your brats yelled one of the other men, Naruto scowled and with an elegant flick of his arm out to the side, a circle of blue swords began revolving around himself and Sasuke. Sasuke looked at them in awe, he was about to touch one, when Naruto hissed slightly. Don't touch growled Naruto, the leader of the group looked unafraid. What are you waiting for grab the brats yelled the man. Naruto smirked slightly. Can I just say anyone who is hit with this will lose a limb, if it impales you, you are instantly dead. Just a touch will leave you with severe untreatable burns said Naruto simply. Sasuke quickly withdraw his arms into himself. The large man just sneered and moved forward. He's bluffing ninja are supposed to protect lives said the man Sasuke watched as Naruto raised a hand and clicked. The blades suddenly moved. They were revolving above the leader each was pointing down diagonally. Each ready to spear him on command. Try me said Naruto simply. The men scowled and began murmuring. They admitted defeat and retrieved their friend from the wall. 
the leader looked up at the blades as the still followed him, each of the men walked down an alleyway. Please in just sand don't let them leave, they are Gato's thugs. They will just torture us more said a family who were hiding their children behind them Naruto's cold gaze moved over them slightly. Naruto, just release the sword said Sasuke. Naruto just clicked his fingers, and quick screams were heard from the alleyway, a blue light shone out before it died down. Sasuke ran to the mouth of the alley and looked at the six piles of ash. He turned and looked at Naruto, who had just decided to walk off. Sasuke followed quickly a scowl on his face. We need to scope the area, but I think we have seen enough. You? Questioned Naruto, Sasuke just made a grunt and nodded. Sasuke once again gave Naruto the once over, he was simply just like his brother, Sasuke found it eerie how similar they were, but Naruto wasn't completely cold, he was skilled Sasuke would never forget the ass kicking he had received from Naruto, but Naruto had that subtle warmth, he cared, clearly enough to kill six men who were terrorizing a town. Naruto looked at the sky and sighed. How did you make those sword things asked Sasuke, Naruto just shrugged. A lot of hard work he answered simply, Sasuke bristled slightly but nodded anyway. Two Naruto felt his eyes fly open, a cold sweat on his body. He felt, his eyes squint in annoyance slightly, he could tell he was used to the nightmares now, that every time he woke up, he just found something different to do. The bags beneath his eyes were the only thing showing his lack of sleep. He stood and threw on his t-shirt, after strapping his tanto on, he was made jump by a simple page turn. Awake already Kakashi sensei asked Naruto simply, Kakashi gave a brief chuckle. Sasuke told me about yesterday said Kakashi simply, Naruto shrugged. They were terrorizing a village, so I dealt with it said Naruto, Kakashi gave a nod, and Naruto sighed as he sat down on the bed once more. Naruto, whilst I admit you are much like your father personality wise, it's not good to lock it all up said Kakashi, Naruto shook his head. The QB told me, the seal placed on me as a baby forced a lot of my consciousness to the subconscious, so when I opened the seal prematurely, it affected my emotions in a more serious manner than what was thought. My emotions are so muted that they very rarely come to the surface. I can feel them and I know I am feeling them, but my body doesn't reveal it, well except for my eyes, but even then, if I concentrate I can even block that said Naruto simply, Kakashi nodded and looked up from his book. At what cost Naruto, you have been through a lot of changes, you also have a lot of power. Plus a dujutsu I have never seen before, said Kakashi, his statement was left hanging in the air. I don't know sensei, Q is also withholding information. I am just going with the flow, said Naruto simply, Kakashi raised an eyebrow. Q, it seems Naruto is closer to the QB, perhaps even mental communication. That would explain his lapse on the way here, thought Kakashi, Naruto unsealed a simple brown book on sealing. Its author was Mito Uzumaki. Seals. Questioned Kakashi, Naruto nodded as he pulled the bookmark from its page. It is so confusing, yet easy at the same time, said Naruto simply, Kakashi nodded and carried on reading. Naruto looked at Kakashi and smiled slightly. What was my father like when he was with mom asked Naruto, Kakashi gave a chuckle. He was awkward Kushina-chan was so full on, she would randomly jump on him with a large smile. From what I could see though, they were very much in love. She would frequent the team with a picnic when we were training, Obito Dadobito had the biggest crush on her. He would try and outshine Sensei with poetry, for Kushina Chan to just stare blankly. In all honesty she only had eyes for Minato Sensei. Though that got her a ton of trouble with the fangirls laughed Kakashi, Naruto smiled sadly, as he looked out of the window. Did dad have a lot of followers? Asked Naruto, Kakashi chuckled. Oh yeah, the amount of times he was caught in the hot baths. He would just stutter and flush like a little girl Kakashi chuckled Naruto smirked. I bet mum didn't take that. Said Naruto with a fond smile on his calm face. Kakashi laughed, briefly. I watched as a group of girls walked away with busted lips, ripped hair and broken hearts laughed Kakashi, Naruto smiled slightly. They both fell into a comfortable silence. Naruto returned to his reading, whilst Kakashi lost himself in memories. Naruto looked to the door inside as it was thrown open. Sasuke was stood with crossed arms. Kakashi, are you actually going to train us? said Sasuke. Sakura appeared around the door, the sun barely rising. Sasuke wake you, ha? Huh? asked Naruto. Sakura sneered slightly, but nodded anyway. Kakashi sighed as he moved to the doorway and put a hand on Sasuke's head. Sure thing Sasuke-chan said Kakashi. Sasuke growled and threw a scowl at Naruto. Get up idiot said Sasuke. Naruto sighed and grabbing his coat he followed his team out of the house. They walked silently through the quiet woods. 
once they had come to a clearing Kakashi turned and looked at his team. Okay team, since Zabuza is going to be up and running in a week's time, I need to train you all. Sasuke, whilst your chakra control is minimal, Kaijutsu is also good but your speed is slow. You really need to work on your chakra control. That way you may be closer to activating the Sharingan. Sakura exemplary chakra control and knowledge to boot, as I said before. A medic nin may be your forte. So I will get a few scrolls and apply for a tutor at the hospital. Naruto, your chakra control is the best in the group. With also good all-round skills, Yukenjutsu is good but still premature. Taijutsu is marvelous and your super strength is also quite good. But you need some Genjutsu training, throwing around your Genjutsu is the quickest way to deplete your chakra. So I will create three clones, each will help you train. I'm going to sit here and the first to complete the day's training gets a rest, the last to complete their training has to do it all over again, as does the rest of the team said Kakashi Sasuke and Sakura stood with wide eyes. Naruto just looked bored. Kakashi quickly created three clones and sent them on their way. Naruto just sighed as they reached another smaller clearing, the clone just sighed also. So what shall I do Kakashi sensei asked Naruto, Kakashi just smirked beneath his mask. While considering I am the real Kakashi, I think I want to know about your dujutsu said Kakashi, Naruto scowled. Hokage-sama said I shouldn't he said it needs to remain as secret as possible said Naruto. Kakashi tisked slightly. I am your sensei, anyone needs to know it's me said Kakashi, Naruto sighed and activated his Rinnegan. Kakashi looked closer to inspect it. At first it was the Rinnegan said Naruto, Kakashi raised an eyebrow. At first? So it has changed then? Asked Kakashi, Naruto nodded slightly. His red swirls seemed to spin slightly. So what's the verdict? Asked Naruto, Kakashi sighed. He stood up and rubbed his chin. I don't know I have never seen anything like it. Its color is reminiscent of the Sharingan, but the spiral itself? I have no idea, said Kakashi, Naruto nodded seriously. He stretched his arms above his head, popping his joints. So what now? asked Naruto, Kakashi I smiled and lifted his Sharingan I cast a Genjutsu said Kakashi, Naruto did as told. Sasuke glared at the tree, he hadn't been able to get any higher, and the Kakashi clone just flipped another page in his book. Sasuke ran to the tree and quickly channeling chakra to his feet he ran up the tree. He ran past the previous scratch but almost instantly, he was rocketed off. He quickly scratched the tree before flipping and landing heavily on his feet. Gah, Kakashi how do I do it asked Sasuke, Kakashi just sighed. I have told you many times Sasuke, feel with your chakra, you will be able to get it once you do said Kakashi, Sasuke snarled and ran to the tree once more. Kakashi perked up and smiled. What snarled Sasuke as he landed on the ground once more seems Sakura one said Kakashi simply Sasuke snarled and ran at the tree with renewed vigor. Sakura sighed as she led staring at the sky. The Kakashi clone had brought her to the clearing, and had then dispelled. She had got the tree climbing ability down after the third try. She had felt elated that she was first, but it was soon soured as Naruto walked through the tree line brushing his hair backwards. The Kakashi clone nowhere in sight Naruto just smirked inwardly, Kakashi had substituted with his clone without releasing a slither of chakra. He congratulated Sakura and heard the frustrated yell from Sasuke in the air. Naruto was leant against the tree reading a book, Sakura was also reading a scroll on medicinal chakra as Sasuke came stumbling through the tree line. He glared at Naruto and Sakura. Kakashi smiled and led them back to house, he was happy already with the progress each of them had made. But he realized that Sasuke and Sakura were a long way off fighting Zabuza, Naruto would probably win if he used the Horatian, but Kakashi knew Naruto had been asked not to use it. As they sat down to eat Tazuna and Tsunami smiled at the team. Thanks Naruto because of you, we have more builders working on the bridge, many feel hope said Tazuna, Naruto looked calm, his eyes soft. That's quite alright said Naruto simply, Tsunami smiled. So what did you kids get up to today asked Tsunami, Sakura smiled proudly. Kakashi sensei taught us tree climbing, I won against the boys. Technique was so easy any idiot could do it right Sasuke-kun said Sakura with happiness only to be shot down by a glare. Sasuke was glaring hotly at her. Some people are struggling Sakura said Naruto with a little smirk. Sasuke glared hotly at him. Like you could do better idiot growled Sasuke, Naruto simply put his hand beneath the plate of food, and whilst walking up the wall and ending up on the ceiling, the food was also stuck to the plate with chakra. Sorry Sasuke-kun, but I had this drilled into me during the month training set. Naruto calmly, Sasuke glared harder willing for the food to fall. Naruto simply dropped from the ceiling and landed back on his seat. Sasuke glared and shoveled the food into his mouth faster. Kakashi, 
I am going to train said Sasuke, Kakashi sighed as he stood. They were all stopped by a crying child. You are all still so stupid. You should run away. Gata was too strong cried Inari. Naruto felt his eyes close slightly. Still going on about that said Naruto simply Inari glared at Naruto. You are the worst, so calm all the time, you would be the first to die said Inari, Naruto sighed and returned to eating his food. Please go away. You're depressing said Naruto. Inari cried and glared at the same time. What would you know about anything you a sport ninja? You don't know what it's like to grow up here, constantly afraid. But Inari was put off by an ice cold glare. Please little boy go back to crying towards the sea your father would be ashamed. He died for this village. Everyone realized Naruto had frozen, a sad look in his eyes. He died for you, he taint his memory by being a whiny little brat nobody cares for your tears. Your mother and grandfather also miss him, yet they keep on going for you. You who have stopped, please just go to Gato and ask him to gut you himself, because he isn't the one hanging the blade over your head. You are said Naruto simply. He stood and glared down at Inari, his silver eyes flashing red spirals. Inari whimpered, tears in his eyes. Naruto muttered Kakashi, Inari ran from the house, Naruto turned and bowed to Tsunami and Tazna. I apologize for the harsh words spoken, said Naruto as he turned to leave, he passed by Kakashi who gave him a nod. Sasuke stood with a confused look in his eyes, Sakura just looked at Kakashi who was looking down. Naruto had returned later that night, apology in his eyes. Naruto slowly opened his eyes, he found himself sat in the center of a small clearing, his body stiff from being sat in his meditating position all night. The team only had two days left before Zabuza would make his final stand, and their training had been put into overdrive, they wouldn't stop training too early in the morning, Kakashi would then force them awake immediately after seven hours sleep, though Naruto was up much earlier than that, he had woke early and decided to find a quiet place to meditate, resulting in his current location. His red hair blew in a slight breeze. His coat was still on his body. He sent his senses out, feeling the things around him he felt calm and relaxed, which was until he felt a familiar chakra signature entered his range. It was the one accompanying Zabuza the other day. Kakashi's words filling into his head. Zabuza used a fake hunter nin to get away echoed Kakashi's voice. Naruto instantly had blue katanas revolving around him. The girl stepped out of the tree and looked at Naruto. The blades all stopped moving. And in a blink they were each, pointing at her. The girl gasped. One wrong move hunter nin and Zabuza is as good as dead said Naruto coldly. The girl gasped and moved her hand to the basket she was carrying. Naruto opened his eyes revealing red swirls, the girl grabbed a handful of senbone and prepared to launch them at Naruto. Naruto smirked and the blades moved back slightly before being rocketed forward one after the other. The girl gasped and dashed around the trees dodging the swords. Naruto flipped backwards, watching as a few senbone passed beneath his head. He landed on his feet and smirked. The girl huffed slightly and threw very precise senbone. Naruto swiftly pulled out his tanto and blocked each senbone with a graceful arc of his blade. The girl just growled and clicked her teeth. Naruto slid the blade home, and tilting his head slightly, he caught the final senbone between his fingers. He noticed the poison dripping off the end, his spiral swirled unknown to him, and Naruto suddenly felt the weight of the senbone being pulled to the girl. Naruto released the senbone and the girl gasped as it slid past her cheek, cutting enough to place the poison. She felt her knees crumple as the fast-acting poison took effect. H. How she whispered, Naruto simply pulled out his tanto as he stepped closer. Your chakra signature, it has a strange coolness about it. I recognized it from the other day, said Naruto calmly. So dot it was you, she whispered. Naruto nodded and with an icy look he plunged the blade deep into her chest. Her eyes wide with shock. You are a hazard to the team, I cannot allow you to interfere, said Naruto as he pulled out his blade, with an elegant twirl. The blood flew off of the blade creating a line in the ground. D damn it she wheezed, Naruto simply turned and walked away sliding his tanto into its scabbard. He stumbled through the forest, his heart aching slightly, he had just killed in cold blood. The girl was defenseless, he should have just let the poison finish her. He shook his head, what's done is done. He knew that killing her was the only way to protect his team. As he walked through the tree line he watched as Sasuke fell from quite high up the tree, he looked at Naruto's disheveled look and snorted. Fell asleep outside idiot chuckled Sasuke, Naruto sighed and shook his head. Na was meditating too long, go too involved said Naruto calmly. He moved through the tree line and found Sakura attempting to revive a fish. Ah oh, Naruto, Kakashi sensei, is back at the house said Sakura, Naruto nodded and watched as the fish suddenly started flapping wildly. 
Well done said Naruto simply, Sakura smiled and quickly put the fish into the large bowl of water she had. She quickly stood up and skipped to where Sasuke was. Naruto just shook his head and moved towards the house, thoughts going everywhere. QB had finalized the theory of the emotions. Naruto had a lot of power, all controlled mentally, his body had a naturally calming aura and with his, abilities that were fed off of emotions, they were lowered to stop his body from destroying itself should he ever lose control. It was still just speculation, the many theories being thrown around were giving Naruto a headache. Naruto saw Kakashi sat on the porch, he looked up and frowned. What is it asked Kakashi, he had recognized the tenseness in Naruto's shoulder. Naruto was stressed and was locking it up. I killed the hunter Nin, she was in the same area, she attacked so I retaliated. I killed her to avoid problems later said Naruto. His tone seemed to wobble slightly. But his face kept the calm countenance. Well done Naruto, I know how you must feel, but no, this may have saved your teammates, said Kakashi. Naruto nodded and sat beside Kakashi. It feels weird. I feel the emotion, but my body just doesn't react, said Naruto. He frowned slightly. It reacts enough Naruto. You need to be careful Zabuza will come at you with a harsh vengeance, said Kakashi softly. Naruto nodded and pulled out his book. I am counting on that said Naruto simply, Kakashi smiled slightly. Let the rest of the team have fun said Kakashi Naruto smirked slightly his face ever calm. Oh I will said Naruto. Sakura walked through the forest. Her chakra had sensed another fading chakra near. So she decided to get to it as soon as possible. The chakra faltered slightly, Sakura picked up her pace and when she dashed through the clearing. She saw charred trees, sen bone litter the grounds. She also recognized Naruto's calm chakra signature permeating the area meaning he had to have been here. She turned and gasped at the smear of blood that seemed to be going off through the trees. Running after it, she came to an attractive girl. Blood soaked her pink kimono. Her hair was caked in dirt and blood. The girl was breathing shallow. Sakura gasped and rolled the girl over. The girl had a distinct blade shape in her chest. Thankfully it had missed the heart. Sakura held a glowing blue hand over the chest. Her eyes closed as she scanned the wound. The girl had a pierced lung, and her heart had been grazed slightly. Sakura's glowing blue hand changed to green, and with a focused mind she began repairing the wound. After an hour, Sakura gasped as the wound closed completely. She had managed to heal a wound. Her chakra was extremely low though, if this girl attacked she wouldn't be able to use a single jutsu. Sakura, with what little chakra she had left, changed her hand back to blue, and did the diagnostic jutsu on her. The girl opened her eyes, her lids heavy, she saw the pink cat that was part of the Konoha Nin crew. The cold silver eyes flashed through her mind painfully. I've healed your wound, but I'm sorry. But you will have severe breathing problems for the rest of your life. Too much stress and you could die, said Sakura sadly. Of course Sakura was only speculating. She had read only a few books about anatomy, so she couldn't be sure. The girl nodded with tears in her eyes. Thank you for healing me, said the girl softly. Sakura nodded and helped the girl sit. Would you like me to help you get home, said Sakura. The girl shook her head. No, it's fine. I don't live too far, I should make it. You did a fine job healing me, thank you, said the girl. Sakura nodded with a big smile, though as she eyed the hole, she had to know. Who did this to you? asked Sakura. The girl fingered the hole in her kimono. A red-haired boy with a cold gaze shivered the girl. Sakura gasped slightly, fear in her eyes. What is your name? asked Sakura. The girl tilted her head. My name is Haku, yours asked Haku kindly. Sakura smiled slightly, though the fear was evident in her eyes. Sakura it was lovely to meet you said Sakura kindly, Haku smiled and nodded, her eyes drifting to what was a fatal wound. How ironic, my enemy tries to kill me, and my enemy ends up healing me too. Sabuza sama will be disappointed in me thought Haku. Sakura moved away and Haku looked at Sakura. You will make a great medic one day said Haku before walking away. If you survive past Friday that is thought Haku, memories of the skilled red head shot through her mind. It would be tough but she only hoped Sabuza forgave her for her weakness. Sakura walked towards the house with a thoughtful scowl on her face. Sasuke had just walked through the door, Naruto and Kakashi were inside talking about God knows. As Sakura walked through the door, her team took in her blood-covered hands. Sakura are you okay? asked Kakashi in shock. Sakura glared as Naruto's cool gaze roamed over her. No sensei, I just had to heal a girl Naruto almost killed. I was lucky to be there on. But Sakura was cut off by the drastic drop in temperature, Naruto was glaring icily, he disappeared and Sakura squeaked as a hand wrapped around her throat and slammed her against the wall. Everyone was frozen momentarily. Do you have any idea what you have done snapped Naruto, his voice actually sounded angry, and what was worse, his eyes and frown showed emotion. 
Sakura realized with fear, she was the only one who had come close to breaking Naruto's calm mask. Naruto she didn't know said Kakashi, placing a calming hand on Naruto's. Naruto dropped Sakura to the floor and glared at her. You know that fake hunter nin that went around with Zabuza? Asked Naruto, Sasuke immediately caught on and glared at Sakura. Yo, about him asked Sakura, Naruto's eyes flashed slightly. Well that was the girl you just saved. You just saved the enemy Sakura said Naruto, his cold tone condescending, his face once again went to betraying nothing. Well how was I supposed to know, you could have told me growled Sakura, Naruto simply raised an eyebrow. Well I didn't know you were going to go around and play good Samaritan now did I said Naruto coolly, the team relaxed once they had realized Naruto had relaxed. Naruto held his hand out to Sakura who was crumpled on the floor, Sakura, whilst I am proud you have achieved such a high level in medical jutsu in only three days. You can't just go around saving everyone, but I understand you weren't to know said Kakashi, Naruto rubbed his hand back through his hair an apologetic look on his face. Sorry Sakura, kind of just lost my cool there, literally chuckled Naruto. Sakura smiled and shook his hand. It's okay Naruto. It must have been hard dealing with the killing, only to realize it was in vain said Sakura. Naruto nodded slightly. Something like that said Naruto simply, Sakura remembered something instantly though. It's okay though, she has permanent heart and lung damage, so she shouldn't be too much of an opposition said Sakura, Kakashi smiled and patted Sakura on the head. You are very skilled indeed. You may rival Tsunade send you one day said Kakashi, Sakura beamed with pride, Kakashi sighed and moved to the table. We have one more day left before Zabuza makes his stand said Naruto calmly, Sasuke nodded and looked at Kakashi who was looking at them with an eye smile. Yeah, and with the hunter Nin weak, he may make a desperate attack earlier said Sakura. Naruto stood with his arms crossed. Zabuza is not the type, he is that Nin wrapped around his finger said Naruto. Sakura blinked slightly. How do you know asked Sakura, Naruto just shrugged. Was she still dying in the clearing, or had she moved? Asked Naruto, Sakura frowned and remembered the blood smear that showed she had crawled. She had crawled away from the clearing said Sakura, Naruto nodded. She is loyal to Zabuza, as soon as I identified her, she immediately went on the defense, but as soon as I threatened Zabuza she moved to attack, said Naruto. Sasuke frowned slightly. He could have her believe she is a weapon, a tool so to speak said Sasuke, Naruto frowned. That's a little specific. What gave you that idea? Asked Naruto, Sasuke smirked slightly. When you went to kill her, did she show anger, fear or regret? Asked Sasuke, Naruto thinned his eyes slightly. Sadness and regret said Naruto coolly, Sasuke nodded. Coupled with the fact she had crawled away showed her devotion. If she had accepted her defeat, I would have believed that they were close. But that borders on obsession said Sasuke, his tone signified he was thinking of something else entirely. Naruto nodded accepting Sasuke's theory. But I don't fully believe he thinks she is a tool there has to be something there. She was dressed casually said Sakura, Naruto raised an eyebrow. Mused. Casually, and that matters, said Naruto. Kakashi just sat back with a smile. His team were truly something else. When they worked together, they were probably the smartest of the bunch. No other team rivaled his. Because if she were merely a tool, she would not be allowed to change out of battle suit, or leave his side said Sakura, Sasuke and Naruto blinked and then smirked. Both were warm. Good thinking said Naruto. Sasuke gave a grunt and Sakura beamed with pride. At first, when I thought of Naruto being on this team, I thought he would still be that annoying brat from before. But Naruto is calm, cool and mysterious, him and Sasuke are opposites yet similar too. Both show little emotion though Naruto shows less than Sasuke, but they both complement each other well. Sasuke is the moon dark and mysterious, Naruto is the sun powerful, calming but also mysterious, in his own way Sakura thought to herself, she was happy with the team, they all worked well together, and they were starting to respect her. So we need to be prepared for a subtly angry Zabuza, a wounded Haku who is going to be desperate in trying to earn Zabuza's favor, said Sasuke, Naruto nodded. And their target will be me said Naruto simply, Sasuke bristled slightly but otherwise ignored it. Kakashi sighed. I want us to protect the bridge builder tomorrow, something tells me Zabuza will try tomorrow even in his weakened state, he is enough for you said Kakashi, Naruto frowned slightly but otherwise nodded. I think we should leave a clone here in case said Naruto, Kakashi nodded. They ate in silence in anticipation for a fight the next day. Naruto was calm he had faith in the team's abilities, Sasuke was eager. He needed to prove his place in the team once more. Sakura knew she had to be ready, she was the medic, she was eager to put Ino in her place once she got back. They stood on the misty bridge, 
the silence was eerie. They had arrived yesterday to find nothing out of the ordinary so they had to help build the bridge, Kakashi had them chopper training whilst they assisted with the building, lest they not waste a day. Team 7 were tense all day each was ready for battle, they had went back to Tazanas tired, Sakura had a headache not used to being so stressed for a whole day. Sasuke was just irritable all day, he was eager for a fight, to show Naruto he had once again surpassed him, but the lazy look that had graced Naruto's face all day, had Sasuke bristling with anger and slight fear. Kakashi had told them they would be fighting the next day so here they stood the expected day, Kakashi's original prediction. The workers were nowhere to be seen. Tazuna looked around fearfully, trying to see through the thick fog. WH. Where is all the workers? whispered Tazuna, the coolness of his breath showing in the air, Kakashi frowned slightly. This mist is too thick for normal mist said Kakashi simply. They pulled tighter ranks, Tazuna in the center. They crossed the bridge, Naruto moved his hand to the hilt of his blade. The smell of blood filled the air, Sakura visibly gagged, Sasuke clenched his jaw hard. Kakashi tensed slightly. A body was led in the middle of the bridge. Kakashi felt his heart clench slightly. The young body of Inari was led with a large gash across his chest. He was about to move forward, when he felt a hand clench the back of his jonin vest. He turned and noticed, Naruto's red swirl spinning. Genjutsu, a bloodline genjutsu, ice crystals in the air are causing us to see a singular image, said Naruto. Kakashi nodded slightly and lifted his headband, Naruto was correct, the only way you would sense it would be to have a dujutsu. Don't worry, it's a genjutsu, said Kakashi Sasuke and Sakura watched as Tazuna seemed to gain his color. Well done Kakashi, we were able to see the genjutsu because of the Sharingan chuckled Zabuza evilly. The crystals began to disappear, leaving a foggy bridge, the coldness in the air was gone. Zabuza, let's try for round two said Kakashi darkly. Zabuza just laughed, three shadows were walking out of the fog, one was Zabuza the other was the hunter Nin and next to them cut up and eyes wide with fear was Inari. Next test, Genjutsu or reality said Zabuza, as he raised his blade. Naruto felt his eyes widen. Reality whispered Naruto, Kakashi blinked as Naruto blurred. Zabuza swung the blade down with a vicious chop. As Naruto went to grab Inari, Nari burst into thousands of ice particles. Wrong answer said Zabuza, his eyes glinting slightly. Naruto cursed slightly, and as the blade was an inch from his head. Team 7 was shocked by an explosion behind them Sasuke, Sakura and Tazuna turned in fear, Kakashi just watched as the large blade ghosted straight through Naruto. Naruto phased through the hunter Nin and blade and ghosted through the floor. H. How did he do that thought Kakashi in shock, Naruto ghosted up through the floor, Back in his original position, he had just managed to stand correctly when the rest of Team 7 and Tazana looked back. Each had a shocked expression on their face. Nice distraction whispered Kakashi, Naruto smirked slightly. Thanks he said, Zabuza just laughed boisterously. You are full of surprises aren't you Brad? Such a dangerous ability said Zabuza. Naruto smirked slightly. He raised his right hand. Blood dripped down his arm. My technique gets better said Naruto, Zabuza watched in horror as Haku dropped to her knees with a cough. Blood spurting out of her mouth, her eyes had darkened. He heard Naruto's cold chuckle. Why you? Growled Zabuza as he looked at Naruto, only to find no one there. Genjutsu or reality echoed Naruto's voice, Zabuza felt a hand smack him on the back, he blinked and watched as Naruto stood with a smirk on his face. Zabuza-sama, are you okay? asked the hunter Nin. Zabuza coughed and looked at the confused gazes of the Konoha leaf ninja. Pretty swift with a genjutsu, and I thought that technique was real, how disappointing said Zabuza mockingly, only for Naruto to smirk. You don't even know when I put the genjutsu on you, how weak said Naruto equally as mocking as Zabuza. It was before he did that strange technique through me said Haku slightly, Naruto mock pouted. Ruin my fun, how's the heart? asked Naruto. His eyes moved from mocking to iced silver. Healed nicely smirked Haku, beneath the mask. Yes well let's try for round two said Naruto, Haku shivered slightly but moved into a crouch. He is mine Zabuza-sama said Haku, Zabuza pulled the blade off of his back. Save some for me, I need to teach that brat a lesson said Zabuza, Haku blurred forward, ignoring the strain on her heart. Naruto smirked, his hands in his pocket, Haku pulled a senbone out and pulled it back and struck forward. Naruto ignored it his coat flowing in the wind. Haku found her sen bone blocked by the blunt side of a kunai, a pressure on the top of her back. She looked up and saw Sasuke Uchiha smirking down at her. Too slow he smirked and Haku felt a force push her backwards. Sasuke flipped off of her elegantly. 
Naruto slipped his hands back into his pockets. Haku steadied herself, and watched as Naruto and Sasuke stood next to each other, twin smirks on their faces. Two against one seems unfair said Haku, Naruto pulled out a kunai, Sasuke doing the same. We will see said Naruto simply, Sasuke and Naruto nodded at each other, Naruto blurred, Haku spun and ducked the blade that flew across her head. She spun slightly and watched as a foot came up and kicked her mask. Her body flew up and bent backwards, she felt someone trip her with an easy foot. She watched as both Sasuke and Naruto were both in the air, flipping through the same hand seals. They both finished and sucking in air, both expelled a fireball. One was the standard fire color, the other was a majestic blue. Haku felt her back hit the floor, her hand landed in a puddle Sasuke and Naruto touched the ground at the same time. Both watched as the two fireballs collided, the fire mixed slightly before combining into a bright white and blue, the fire expanded slightly, the warmth spread through across the whole bridge. Sakura and Tazuna watched with wide eyes. Kakashi smiled slightly, and Zabuza looked at the fireball with a glare. Looks like the brats learned some teamwork said Zabuza, Kakashi eyes smiled slightly. Glad to see they learned that on their own said Kakashi, Zabuza snarled, and went to cleave Kakashi down the middle. Sasuke and Naruto watched as the fire died down, they saw nothing out of the ordinary, no burnt body. Sasuke and Naruto quickly moved back to back, both of them searching. That almost got me said Haku, she was stood to the side, her feet in a puddle. I had to use one of the most coveted abilities of my clan, said Haku. Naruto realized there was an almost unburnt spot amidst the burnt brown water said Naruto simply, Haku nodded seriously. My clan has the ability to turn water to ice, similar to your blue fire said Haku. Naruto smirked slightly. Sasuke looked at Naruto. Fire and wind, though my bloodline changes it completely said Naruto. Haku nodded. It is very rare, many bloodline limits just use natural elements. The blue fire of the Uzumaki clan head family was one of three mutated mutations so to speak said Haku, Sasuke looked at Naruto. Shocked. Clan head Sasuke thought to himself. Naruto just stood calmly. The bloodline has changed with each head, my grandfather was control of the raw blue fire. My mother created fire chains, or chakra chains as she called them. And I have come back to the blue fire my grandfather and I have different capabilities, said Naruto, Haku nodded. Before my clan was slaughtered, my mother taught me one technique that was difficult, for even the most skilled of us. It allowed us to use the water element in our body to move to another body of water, said Haku, Naruto raised an eyebrow. What is its speed? asked Naruto simply, Haku smirked beneath her mask. If you live long enough, you may find out, said Haku, before she dropped into the water. Naruto felt the puddle beneath his feet ripple, he smirked slightly and backward flipped, Haku jumped out of the water brandishing a senbone. She frowned through her mask at Naruto. Not fast enough said Naruto as he landed gracefully on the bridge, Sasuke blurred and stood next to him. I couldn't track her, her chakra drops when she enters the water whispered Sasuke, Naruto nodded slightly. We need to tread carefully said Naruto, he chuckled and pushed Sasuke to the side, Haku flew forward, her two arms outstretched with two senbone in them. She skidded to a stop where Naruto and Sasuke were just stood. Naruto and Sasuke pulled out a blade and moved forward effortlessly, they both went for a strike, Haku blocked the two kunai and smirked. Naruto and Sasuke both nodded to each other and quickly pulling out another kunai, both went to slice Haku's body whilst her hands were preoccupied. Haku cursed as she saw this, jumping slightly, she sent out a kick with each leg. Both feet hitting the two boys in the face, both stumbled backwards as Haku landed in a crouch. Haku turned her body slightly and dodged a slash from Naruto's tanto, her eyes caught the silver and her chest ached in reminder. She cartwheeled over Sasuke who had dashed forward with a stab of his kunai, as she was about to land, she turned her body to dodge another slash from Naruto, she weaved beneath a wide arc from Sasuke. She flipped backwards, another slash from Sasuke passed below her head. She flipped backwards once more, she landed with a pant. Her breathing labored. She is feeling the effects from the wound whispered Sakura, Zabuza heard the voice in the wind and turned to see Haku panting slightly, he was about to move when a kunai slash from Kakashi blocked him. Your opponent is me Zabuza said Kakashi, Zabuza cursed slightly and swung a wide swing Kakashi's way. Sasuke and Naruto both watched as Haku looked at her surroundings. I am afraid it's the end for you, we are surrounded by water, I win said Haku before she flashed through hand seals. W what whispered Sasuke, Haku just smirked beneath her mask. Mirrors began rising from the water, they moved and made more of themselves. 
till they were stuck in a dome of mirrors. Demonic ice mirrors said Haku simply Sasuke and Naruto watched as Haku stepped into one of the mirrors, and with a flash each of the mirrors had a copy within them. Naruto frowned slightly. Interesting technique, it is similar to your transportation technique said Naruto simply, Haku nodded, the mirror images doing the same. It is, now you die said Haku, each clone brandished Senbon, and suddenly Senbon flew from all directions. Naruto activated his Rinnegan almost instinctually, he dodged the Senbon and smirked as he saw Haku move from mirror to mirror at high speeds. Sasuke panted slightly, he was hit with a few Senbon, but Naruto had helped by pushing and pulling him when needed. You okay Sasuke asked Naruto, Sasuke pulled out a couple of Senbon with a wince and nodded. Sasuke noticed how Naruto wasn't looking at him. Yeah, so how are we going to get out of this mess? Asked Sasuke, Naruto frowned. I don't know yet said Naruto, he created a mass of clones, each one stood ready to attack. Naruto watched as one of the clones' eyes went glassy before they changed into blood red with slitted pupils. Q? Are you going to do that every time I create a clone? Asked Naruto, QB smirked slightly. Of course Brett, I've got to have my fun somehow said QB with a mental snarl. Naruto smirked slightly. But I want you to die that was the purpose of a clone thought Naruto the QB snarled but agreed and relinquished control of the clone. Naruto moved his arm forward, each clone running forward, there was a blur, and the clones exploded. Naruto fluttered his eyes closed as the information rushed in. She's fast muttered Naruto, his smirk turned feral slightly. What's the plan asked Sasuke, Naruto turned and whispered in Sasuke's ear. Sasuke nodded slightly and with a smirk ran towards one of the mirrors, his fingers flashing through hand seals, he sucked in a breath and expelled a large fireball. Naruto spun and in the opposite direction fired a blue fireball. As the two fires crashed into the dome, a shake met the bridge. Naruto jumped forward slightly, dodging a downward slash from Haku. Sasuke spun and caught the blur of Haku as she moved to the mirror. What was that Sasuke thought to himself, he realized that as Haku was moving trying to attack Naruto, she was actually running between each mirror. Naruto deactivated his Rinnegan and spun to see Sasuke wielding a single Tomoe Sharingan in each eye. Nice, got your Sharingan I see said Naruto simply, Sasuke smiled widely, happiness flooded through him, Haku watched as Sasuke dashed to Naruto and pushed him out of the way, Naruto flipped backwards his hands touching the floor before he flipped to right himself. He landed on his feet, and smiled at Sasuke. You two are becoming quite troublesome, I must kill you said Haku, they felt a spike in her chakra, Naruto nodded to Sasuke, and both blurred slightly, Sasuke held his hands flat for Naruto to use as a springboard, as Naruto's boot landed in Sasuke's hand, he thrust upwards, Naruto jumped slightly. Naruto flew upwards, his hand glowing blue slightly as he thrust his fingers up at the earth, it cracked easily beneath his strength, Haku felt the mirror smash and threw Senbon at Sasuke. Sasuke watched as a blue sword appeared and blocked the Senbon. Naruto smashed through the mirror and was floating in the air slightly, flicking his arm out to the side gracefully, he fell back inside the mirror. He landed gracefully next to Sasuke. You're going down said Naruto calmly and Haku watched as Naruto clenched his fist. Bright blue katanas pierced each of the mirrors from the outside. Haku threw a senbone at Naruto and quickly departed from the mirror. Naruto who didn't sense it coming felt something lodge painfully in his neck. Sasuke blinked in shock as Naruto fell to his knees, he caught Naruto as he toppled backwards. Naruto called Sasuke loudly, Naruto winced slightly. Damn it, that's what I get for becoming complacent said Naruto. His eyes felt heavy. Naruto, damn it, don't die, whispered Sasuke. Naruto smirked slightly. She missed the major artery. Take out the damn Senbon wheeze Naruto. Sasuke blinked in shock, but Naruto felt his eyes slip closed. As the mirrors were falling apart, Sasuke turned and glared hotly at Haku. He was a model shinobi. He would kill to protect the ones he considers precious, said Haku. Sasuke put Naruto down softly. You just made a big mistake, said Sasuke, tears glinting in his eyes his Sharingan world. Why you held no love for him, he was nothing but an idiot in your way said Haku. Sasuke blinked in shock. H. How whispered Sasuke, Haku smirked beneath her mask. Your pink head friend talks a lot said Haku, Sasuke snarled slightly. He dashed forward and threw a combo of punches at Haku, Sakura and Tazuna arrived inside the dome. She noticed Naruto collapsed on the ground, her heart leapt into her throat. She saw Sasuke battling hard tears in his eyes. I must have missed something Sakura thought to herself. She moved to Naruto and pulled out the Senbone, as she was about to heal him, the wound sealed closed. 
Naruto's eyes shot open. Damn it, Sasuke I told you to take out the Senbon. Do you know how long I was dot? Oh hey Sakura said Naruto calmly. Sakura smiled slightly and gave Naruto a brief hug. Glad to see you are okay Naruto said Sakura simply. Wow what upset him asked Naruto casually, Sakura smiled. We are close team said Sakura, Naruto nodded and gave a small smile, his face the ever calm. Suke dodged a blow from Haku and blinked when something touched his back slightly, Naruto spun gracefully, and with a slice of his blade Haku's mask fell to the floor, a large cut marring her face. You missed said Naruto coldly, the blade placed next to her neck, Sasuke looked at Naruto with wide eyes, Naruto gave a calm look. Glad too, see your back idiot said Sasuke, Naruto smirked. I told you to pull out the senbon said Naruto simply Sasuke smirked and pulled out a kunai, as he was about to thrust it forward, finishing the job, the sound of chirping echoed through the air. Sabuza sama said Haku, she disappeared with a blur, Naruto cursed and blurred also. Kakashi looked wide-eyed as his electric coated arm had buried itself within a young girl. His fight with Sabuza had finally met a climax, he was about to finish it. Sabuza lifted his large blade, attempting to cut down Kakashi, Haku had grabbed hold of Kakashi's arm in a vice grip. Looks like I win Kakashi chuckled Zabuza, Kakashi blinked as warm blood hit his face again. Haku's hand dropped from his limply, Zabuza, dropped the blade. He looked down and found an arm going straight through him. The tips of the fingers embedded in the back of Haku's skull. He turned his head weakly and saw Naruto stood on top of a clone, to get the right height. His coat was being held by another clone, his arm was buried through Zabuza. You lose said Naruto simply, Zabuza coughed, blood pouring out of his mouth. Uzumaki brat, you are something else, said Zabuza. Naruto pulled his arm out swiftly, Kakashi doing the same now that Haku had released her grip. Zabuza and Haku both collapsed to the floor. Zabuza quickly grabbed Haku with his weak arms, pulling her into a hug. You should have told her said Naruto simply, blood dripped down his arm and off of his fingertips. Told her what, what a useless tool she was said Zabuza coldly. Naruto felt his eyes soften. That she was like a daughter to you, she would have loved to hear those words said Naruto, Zabuza coughed painfully. What would you know, you tried to kill her said Zabuza, his eyes glaring. Indeed, but still through battle we learn a lot from our opponents said Naruto simply, Zabuza looked down at Haku, tears filling his eyes. She thought I never cared said Zabuza, Naruto smiled slightly. No she knew, she was just happy with your company said Naruto, Zabuza looked at Naruto painfully. You got all of that from one fight? Asked Zabuza, Naruto smiled slightly. That and her devotion said Naruto, Zabuza coughed slightly, his eyes happy. Please, take my blade as a maki, I want you to have it as my last request, said Zabuza. Naruto looked at the large cleaver. Asked Naruto, Zabuza smirked beneath the wrapping. Because, you beat the demon, and I want it in good hands, said Zabuza. Naruto bowed his head. I would be honored, said Naruto simply. Zabuza nodded and looked at Haku. I don't know if I will meet you on the other side. Demons don't go where angels lay, said Zabuza. Naruto's calm face looked up to the sky. You will see her again, said Naruto simply. Zabuza closed his eyes and with a sigh he stopped breathing. Kakashi watched as Naruto smiled at the sky slightly. Well done Naruto, Team 7. You have just completed an A-rank mission, said Kakashi. Naruto nodded and moved to one of the larger puddles. He moved to his knees. He dropped his arm in it and scrubbed the blood off. Here you go kid said Tazuna, throwing Naruto a cloth, Naruto smiled his thanks. His clone moved next to him, its calm face was hiding the blood red eyes. I wish you had let me shove my fist through the bastard, I wanna feel the blood cake my arm said the QB mentally, Naruto just shook his head with a small smile. Next time Q next time said Naruto, the QB smirked and nodded to Naruto. I'm holding you to that brat said QB mentally, Naruto smiled slightly. He finished washing his arm. The puddle was blood red, Naruto stood and threw his coat onto his shoulders. He left his arms out of the sleeves, he wrapped his headband on the floppy sleeve. He tied the string on the front of the jacket to stop it from blowing away. With his arms free from the sleeves he shoved his hands into his pockets. A.N., the best explanation I can give is, similar to Abari Kyoya from Keikyo Hitman Reborn, the way he has his jacket. He moved to Zabuza's blade and smiled. Picking up the mammoth of a blade, he watched as the alchemic circles seemed to spin in agitation. Do you think you will be able to use that? It's just as big as you are said Tazana. Naruto smiled slightly. I will use it one day, but I am nowhere near tall enough said Naruto simply. He checked to see if his team was watching, thankfully they weren't, 
so he put both hands on the blade. Tazana watched in interest as yellow lightning began coursing around the blade. Then it was like the blade was pulled inwards and up. The yellow lightning pulled together and moved upwards before disappearing. The blade was gone. Where is it? asked Tazana. Naruto smirked slightly. In a pocket dimension said Naruto simply, Tazana stood looking dumbfounded. As Naruto moved to his team, they heard a rowdy noise coming from the end of the bridge. Naruto's coat blew in the breeze, he held the shoulder pads on his shoulder with chakra so only the arms and main part of the coat moved. It seems that Zabuza couldn't even take you out, I knew I should have hired Leaf Ninja said Gato, Naruto watched as the sea of mercenaries parted to reveal a short stubby man with large glasses. Gato I presume said Kakashi lazily, Gato snorted loudly. So how much will it cost for you to hand over the bridge builder said Gato, Naruto rolled his eyes and blurred, moving so he could look straight down the line at Gato Sasuke had done the same. Both had a kunai in their hand, standing shoulder to shoulder they both threw a kunai with a blur. Sasuke's lodged itself in Gato's throat whilst Naruto's pierced the center of his forehead. Gato collapsed backwards without a sound, Naruto and Sasuke just smirked slightly. They killed our meal ticket yelled one of the mercenaries. I want the fucking red head yelled another, Naruto and Sasuke tensed, as the men went to move forward. An arrow, lodged itself in the ground before the men could move forward. Naruto turned and smiled slightly. The entire town was there, each brandishing their own weapon. Leave our town alone yelled Inari. Naruto smirked slightly. He noticed his clone stood at the front with Tsunami and Inari. The clone dispelled with a nod. The entire morning flashed through his head. Naruto watched as the villagers stepped forward, and the mercenaries ran with their tails between their legs. Naruto felt elation that the mission was over, Sasuke collapsed onto the floor with a sigh and Sakura just smiled as Inari ran and hugged his grandfather. We will miss you team 7 said Tazuna, he was shaking hands with Kakashi. Inari was blubbering slightly, Naruto was just smiling as Tsunami fussed over Sasuke, Takura and himself. The whole village had come to see off team 7, the sun was high in the sky and Kakashi was just smiling slightly. Thank you Tazuna san but you will be hearing again from us soon in regards to the extra money owed for the mission said Kakashi, Tazana blushed slightly and humphed. Till then Kakashi said Tazana shortly. Naruto felt a small force slam into him. Later Inari don't forget to protect your family and village okay said Naruto calmly, Inari nodded tears in his eyes. Why are you not crying asked Inari. Naruto just smiled and patted him on the head. Inari, you don't need to cry to feel sad, keep a strong heart and head said Naruto simply, Inari nodded but cried anyway. Thank you Team 7, for all of your help said Tazana, the village echoed his statement, and on that note Team 7 began crossing the now finished bridge. What shall we call the bridge father asked Tsunami, Tazana thought slightly. The great Tazana bridge said Tazana boisterously, a few of the villagers grumbled. I say the great Naruto bridge said Inari, Tazana smiled and hugged Inari to his side. Yes, the great Naruto bridge, for underneath the stone surface of the bridge lay the ever-moving water, carrying emotions and dreams as they go said Tazana. The village chorused and Tazana smiled slightly rather poetic father, but its suit said Tsunami. Tazana nodded and watched as Team 7 became nothing more than small dots. Kakashi read his book relaxed that the mission was over, Sasuke was turning his Sharingan on and off, reveling in the ability. Naruto was just walking with his hands in his pockets, and Sakura was reading a book on anatomy. Kakashi, are you going to be training me more, now that I have my Sharingan said Sasuke boisterously, Kakashi sighed. He knew this was coming, Sasuke would become arrogant now that he had his Sharingan. Sure thing Sasuke said Kakashi with a bored tone, Naruto sighed and looked up at the sky. Something wrong idiot asked Sasuke, he deliberately flashed his Sharingan at Naruto. Naruto was half tempted to throw his Rinnegan back at him, but thought better of it. Not really, just can't wait to be home said. Naruto, Sakura nodded, her eyes not moving from the book. Yeah I can't wait to get an internship from the hospital said Sakura. Naruto nodded kindly and returned to watching the sky. I wonder how team 8 is doing said Naruto out loud, Sakura and Sasuke looked at Naruto with a raised eyebrow. Why do you care asked Sasuke, Sakura was also interested, Kakashi just smirked as he closed his book. Well that's Hinata-chan's team so I am interested to know how she is doing said Naruto. Sakura smiled slightly, her eyes glinting at the thought of gossip. Why would you care about Hinata asked Sakura, Naruto sighed slightly and gave Sakura a calm look. Because she is a nice girl, she came and spoke to me for a whole day once, when I was training said Naruto. Sasuke smirked slightly, Sakura wiggled her eyebrow. So you found out about her stalking tendencies, 
said Sakura her tone had a bitchiness about it. No different from what you and Ino do to Sasuke, at least she doesn't follow me to the hot springs deadpan Naruto, Sakura made a squeak noise and blushed as she stuck her head back into the book. Sasuke just glared a hole into Sakura's head. So dot you are okay with Hinata following you around asked Sasuke, his eyes flicking to Sakura. Naruto shrugged. She's just shy, she blushes a lot and she has little to no self-confidence, but she cares said Naruto, Sasuke nodded understanding, knowing what it was like to be alone, and when someone cares it's hard to dislike them. You don't tell her that said Sakura with a gasp, Naruto raised an eyebrow. Why wouldn't I, I don't like to talk about people behind their backs said Naruto, Kakashi smiled slightly. Like mother like son Kakashi thought Naruto and Sasuke began talking about Jutsu Sasuke was intrigued to know what Jutsu Naruto actually knew. Sakura was getting excited about the book, she loved learning and when an opportunity arose that she could learn something invaluable, it made her even more excited. Kakashi enjoyed this side of his team, the calm side where they all got along. Kakashi sighed as he breathed in the calm night air, the team had decided to sleep in a clearing close by the main road. He was sat up in the tree, his book long forgotten. He looked at the moon slowly creeping away to give way to the morning. He looked down to Naruto and smirked as he counted down mentally from five. As if on cue Naruto sat bolt up breathing deeply. His eyes wide with shock. Morning Naruto said Kakashi, Naruto didn't even bother to look in the tree. Morning Nisan said Naruto, Kakashi blinked slightly, his eyes opened wide. Nisan hi asked Kakashi. Naruto nodded slightly. You told me what my parents were to you so it's only fitting right. If you dislike it I will stop said Naruto softly. Kakashi smiled slightly. Nah it's fine Naruto what was that ability you used on the bridge asked Kakashi, Naruto sighed slightly. I knew you would ask me that said Naruto, Kakashi I, smiled. Naturally said Kakashi, Naruto sighed. It is a space slash time ninjutsu, similar to the Horishin, only it doesn't teleport me, it teleports my exterior body so to speak. But I am able to select at any point which part of my body to make solid. For example I can reach through someone and rip out their heart without creating a single wound said Naruto. Kakashi shivered slightly. Dangerous of any other tricks I need to know about? Asked Kakashi, Naruto shook his head. Surprisingly no, all I have, is blue fire, space slash time ninjutsu and my Rinnegan said Naruto. Kakashi nodded slightly. Still a dangerous set of skills said Kakashi, Naruto nodded. It's hard, thinking of all these abilities and they belong to just one person, said Naruto softly. Kakashi nodded knowing the feeling, people with a lot of power, always question why they were given abilities so far out of the norm just think of them as a gift said Kakashi, Naruto smiled slightly. No, because I lost my parents because of these gifts said Naruto simply, Kakashi nodded seriously, team 7 was soon on the road home, silence had enveloped the team, Sasuke was reading a scroll from Kakashi about the Sharingan, Kakashi said he kept it around just in case Sasuke would need it. Sakura was once again stuck in her book, Kakashi watched as Naruto scowled into a seal design. The ink brush was in his mouth. Kakashi looked up from his book to see the large leaf village in the distance. Helm said Kakashi simply, Team 7 looked up from their books and smiled slightly. Kakashi sighed as they passed through the large gates, a sense of peace filled him. Hey Kakashi, good mission asked Kotetsu, a tuning with a bandage strapped across his nose. Kakashi just sighed. Yeah, A rank said Kakashi, Kotetsu and his partner looked at the unharmed, almost bored looking Janan. Did you do all the work asked Izumo, Kotetsu just looked at Naruto with a keen eye. Nah, they defeated the opponent said Kakashi. Naruto looked up from his book, he could feel someone staring at him. Naruto noticed the Chunin with a bandage staring at him. Kotetsu eyed the strange horn like hair on his head. Ah so you're the reason Iruka has been so worried said Kotetsu. Naruto rolled his eyes and moved into the village. Kakashi waved goodbye and the team moved silently through the village. Naruto watched as people began whispering as he passed, a few threw glares, others looked surprised he had actually survived a mission. Naruto recognized a Jonin who nodded his head to him, Naruto tilted his head forward in acknowledgement. Naruto felt a familiar chakra signature move towards him quickly. Naruto dropped and as his hand touched the floor, he blurred slightly. Sasuke watched as Naruto appeared crouched on one of the roofs of building. A woman with a tan coat skidded into the spot where Naruto was previously stood. Naruto stood majestically on the building. Getting slower Anko-chan said Naruto with a smirk. Sakura and Sasuke watched as the scantily clad women pulled out a kunai and licked the blade slightly. Gotten faster brat, Kakashi actually teaching you something said Anko, throwing Kakashi a glare. Faster than you challenged Naruto, Anko smirked viciously. 
First one with a scratch buys the other Dengo said Anko, she blurred and Sasuke and Team 7 watched as Naruto tilted backwards dodging the slash backwards. He flipped backwards slightly, he landed in a crouch, and as soon as his hand touched the floor, he blurred away again. Anko, we need to hand in a report said Kakashi, he was eyeing Anko in her clothes. Anko snorted slightly. Don't worry this won't take long said Anko, before she blurred with a yell of Naruto's name. Kakashi, Sasuke and Sakura sighed as they stood outside the Hokaye's office. They were waiting for Naruto, who had yet to show, it had been half an hour since he had left, and Sasuke was growing impatient. The Hokage called them in, a smile on his face. Akakashi-kun and Team 7 said Sarutobi. He looked for Naruto. His heart thumped unevenly when he wasn't there. He is still here Hokage-sama, but Anko got him before we got here said Kakashi, Sarutobi chuckled slightly. Team 7 blinked in shock as the door was flung open. Naruto was walking and brushing his hair back into place. His hair was all spiking upward showing how fast he was moving. His horns stood up higher than usual. Sorry I am late sensei said Naruto casually, Kakashi just waved an arm. Sasuke glared slightly but gave Naruto a nod, Sakura just shook her head. So how did the first C rank go asked Sarutobi, Kakashi sighed slightly. Mission parameters were raised to an A rank, the client knew the mission would be higher, Naruto called it right at the start. We were met with missing nin from Kiri, the demon brothers, Zabuza Mochi and a fake hunter nin by the name of Haku. The team has progressed massively over their time away. We have a prodigy of medicine in Sakura, who had managed to close a fatal wound, said Kakashi. They all realized he had left out the details. Something Sakura was thankful for, she smiled shyly as the Hokage beamed at her. That is most good news. Miss Haruno, I will get the top medic nin we have in the village and get him to assist you, said the Hokage. Sakura blinked in shock. She bowed dramatically. Thank you Hokage-sama said Sakura Sarutobi motioned for Kakashi to continue. Sasuke Uchiha has activated the first level in the Sharingan, I will begin training him, he has a good speed now, and his strength and taijutsu are both high tuning. Naruto has refined his skills massively, whilst his improvements aren't as visible as his teammates, he has a brilliant grasp on his skills. He improved those that needed improvement, and my highest commendation is that Naruto and Sasuke's teamwork was second to none said Kakashi, Naruto smiled slightly. Sasuke raised his head with pride. Team 7, a very large, congratulations is in order, you have each improved massively since your academy days, continue on and no doubt you could become as great as the Senen said Sarutobi. Team 7 gave a bow and left the room, Sarutobi looked at Kakashi with a serious eye. Naruto displayed some interesting techniques said Kakashi, Sarutobi felt his eyes widen. And his team questioned Sarutobi, Kakashi sighed. They are still unaware said Kakashi, Sarutobi released a breath and nodded. Good Donzo and my two teammates are pushing me, they want to know where their weapon disappeared for a month, they keep hounding. When the Chunin exams are here that's when it will hit the roof, but I am prepared for that. I just need him out of their sights for the moment said Sarutobi, Kakashi sighed slightly. But what are the villagers they have no doubt spread rumors said Kakashi, Sarutobi nodded. Donzo knows Naruto has changed, I just said he activated the seal in the scroll, how he knew about that I will never know. But anyway, Donzo accepted that answer, for now said Sarutobi, Kakashi sighed once more. So a long road for Naruto is ahead said Kakashi, Sarutobi smirked slightly. Nope, because I have a plan said Sarutobi, a glint in his eyes. Six months, Team 7 had been a team for six months, they were relatively unknown among the other ninja, Kakashi had taken them on several C ranks, and even a B rank, but no one really knew how the team operated. But they each had personal reputations, Sasuke was crowned prodigy, he had leveled his Sharingan to two tomos, and was increasing his speed tenfold, he was acknowledged by the public as the strongest member of the team. Sakura was still the dark horse, her skills in medical ninjutsu had baffled the hospital, but they were running out of things to teach her theory-wise. Her practical skills were also top grade, but she was young and prone to easy mistakes. Naruto was the mystery, his skills constantly baffled his teammates. No matter how far they had come, Naruto seemed to just be farther in front. Sasuke had challenged Naruto to a spar, Sasuke fought hard, but Naruto's super strength and Kenjutsu skills were refined. Sasuke would win once, and then Naruto would win ten. But through it all Sasuke and Naruto were close, they would frequent each other's place for tea. Sasuke had also commandeered the spare room in Irika's and Naruto's house so that if he stayed too late, he didn't have to go home. Naruto's personality had warmed up slightly, to the general public it was widely known that Naruto meant only business. 
only a select few actually knew Naruto's kind side. Naruto stood with a book in his hands, his eyes briefly flicking up to look at his team. Sasuke had changed his outfit slightly, he had taken to wearing a blue trench coat, an Uchiha fan stitched into the back. He wore black shorts and a high-collared white t-shirt, his sandals were black. Sakura was wearing tight tan pants, knee-high black boots, a red short sleeve t-shirt, the zip going up the left slightly, the collar was slightly high. On her brown belt were two packs one was her shuriken kunai and newly acquired senbone. The other was white, and inside it contained healing ointments, sort of bandages and other medical supplies. Her long pink hair was pulled into a messy bun, strands falling behind her. Her headband was being used as that, a headband. She too sighed as he turned a page in her book. Kakashi is never on time moaned Sasuke, he heard Naruto grunt slightly and Sakura give a feminine sigh. And I don't think that will change said Naruto softly into the cool air. Sakura just rolled her eyes and nodded. Sasuke liked his team, the atmosphere was so different to when they first got together. Sakura had lessened in her attempts to go out, something Sasuke was thankful for. He was also impressed with her skills in medic jutsu according to the hospital she has been the closest to beating Tsunade Senju's record, Sakura could only do basic jutsu, the hospital wouldn't teach her anything more, claiming she had to be a chunin to learn the extra stuff, resulting in Sakura coming to a plateau. Naruto was simply just more refined, his language had improved even higher than after his drastic change, Iruka had laughed and said Naruto was listening to the Hyuga speak. Naruto's skills were also refined, granted they were still a bit rough around the edges in some places. But Sasuke was proud for his friend. It had taken Sasuke a long time to even think that about Naruto as something more than an annoyance, but Naruto was pushy and friendly in his own way. Naruto hadn't changed much, he had gotten taller, all of them had. Naruto still wore his tight black pants, his knee-length brown boots, his tight-fitting grey t-shirt, and his long black coat. His hair had gotten longer, the back being pulled into a small ponytail. His horns of hair still stood proud on his head, his hair was still blood red. Naruto's eyes had changed slightly, his eyes were still piercing silver but the skin around his eyes had darkened, as if he was wearing eyeliner. Naruto had played it off simply, but Sakura had said it was nothing to do with lack of sleep. Naruto looked healthy, the bags beneath his eyes had gone. His skin was smooth and perfectly tanned. So wondered what we are doing today said Sasuke. He felt strange being the one to initiate conversation Naruto perked his ears slightly. B said Naruto, Sasuke and Sakura tensed. C said Sakura Sasuke then heard the whistling of air. B said Sasuke, Sakura inclined her head, then each of them blurred. Naruto simply flicked his wrist, a kunai spun in his hand. His arm blurred knocking away a few shirukan, his eyes fading from red quickly. Sasuke threw his own shirukan and with them knocked away the oncoming shirukan, Sakura threw three kunai and pinned the shirukan to the tree closest to her. Kakashi blurred onto the bridge the familiar orange book in his hand. He blinked in shock as a kunai slid effortlessly beneath his chin, another kunai was pointed below his heart, and a long blade was held against his back, ready to slice his spine. Kakashi looked at his Yunnan with a smile. Well done, a little faster and you may actually kill me said Kakashi before he blurred with a show of leaves, he appeared sat on the bridge, three pieces of white paper in his hands, what is that sensei asked Sakura, Kakashi I smiled at his team. Your entrance into the Chunin exams, as a group of three you can participate in them I have no doubt all of you will make it into the final round, you are the most gifted of course, this Kakashi, Naruto and Sasuke both smiled at each other, Sakura smiled with them. So what do we need to do asked Sasuke, Kakashi flicked the paper at them. The team each plucked their paper out of the air. Sign those forms and bring them with you to the academy on Friday said Kakashi, Naruto frowned slightly. How long have you had these asked Naruto, Kakashi smiled slightly. Well you guys have the rest of the day off said Kakashi before he disappeared, Naruto sighed and pulled a pen seemingly out of thin air. How do you do that? Asked Sakura, Naruto held out his pen once he had signed his name. Do what? Asked Naruto simply, Sakura sighed and shook her head so we are going to do it then said Sakura softly. Naruto nodded and Sasuke did the same. Why not? We are each of Chunin or higher said Sasuke. Naruto nodded in agreement. Plus our teamwork is second to none said Naruto simply. Sakura nodded nervously. She signed her paper and scowled slightly. So what are you guys doing for the rest of the day? Asked Sakura. Naruto sighed and placed his hands in his pockets. I'm off to the bookstore. I need some help with a seal I am creating said Naruto. Sasuke and Sakura raised their eyebrows. Making your own seal? Questioned Sasuke shocked slightly. Naruto nodded. 
I still have a lot to learn, but hopefully this seal will be a good first said Naruto. He nodded to his teammates and walked towards town. S. Sasuke kun, do you really think we can do it? Become Chunin asked Sakura. Sasuke nodded his head seriously. Sure, you are much stronger than before. Remember that said Sasuke as he walked off in the opposite direction. Sakura sighed and walked towards town. He is still so cold, thought Sakura. Naruto walked through town with his hands in his pockets, a thoughtful look in his eyes. This seal is so fucking difficult, Naruto thought to himself. He rounded the corner and watched as a boy wearing makeup and black pajamas with cat ears lift up a young child by the front of his t-shirt. The young boy's hair was poking out of a gray helmet. He was wearing a long teal scarf that dragged along the floor. He wore a yellow t-shirt and gray pants. P. Dot, please get off, said the boy. The older boy just smirked. You bumped into me, you little snot. Now I am going to kick your little head, and said the older boy. The kid whimpered. Kankuro, just stop it. We need to get back, said a blonde-haired girl. Naruto glared as he stepped forward. I suggest you listen to the pretty girl, or lose your arm, said Naruto coolly. Everyone looked at him in shock. Tamari felt her eyes widen slightly. Wow, Konoha has some looker, she thought. She watched as Kankuro got a mischievous smirk on his face. I'll be with you in a minute pretty boy, Kankuro chuckled. He raised a hand to strike the young boy across the face, when suddenly a hand appeared, clutching his fist tightly. Kankuro raised his eyebrow and looked impressed. Hitting this kid's hand is like hitting a steel wall, Kankuro thought. The girl looked at the red head with shock. Strong too. And his speed she thought. The little child looked at Naruto with respect. Last warning or I won't hesitate to chop your arms off and beat you with them. And you can get out of that tree said Naruto coldly, his fingers deftly throwing a kunai and piercing the trunk of the tree. The blonde haired girl and Konkuro both looked at the tree in shock as a red head appeared, they shivered in fear as his cold eyes leveled them. Tamari, Konkuro, what an embarrassment said the red head, Konkuro dropped the boy and stood back in fear. Tamari looked at the unaffected face of Naruto and frowned. He sensed Gara coming, and he caught Konkuro's fist like it was nothing. This kid is no pushover Tamari thought, Naruto pushed the kid behind him slightly as he stepped back, sand spun on the floor as the red head moved in front of the two others. I am sorry for my siblings arrogance and idiocy said the red head. Naruto simply glared slightly, everyone could feel the tension charge the air. No problem, just remember you are on Konoha soil, crepancies like this will not be tolerated said Naruto. His eyes challenging but his face calm. Of course said the red head, he turned and gave his siblings a glare causing them to freeze slightly. Now enjoy your stay and good luck in the Chunin exam said Naruto calmly, the red head looked at him. What is your name asked the red head, Naruto smirked slightly, his face unchanging. Tell me yours and I will tell you mine said Naruto simply, Gara glared slightly, but was miffed when it didn't affect Naruto. Gara Sabaku said Gara, his voice emotionless. Naruto rubbed a hand through his hair. Naruto Uzumaki said Naruto, Gara smirked viciously. You will be the one I kill said Gara. Naruto smirked viciously in return. Is that right? Then I eagerly await your challenge in the Chunin exam said Naruto. Gara spun and walked off. San moved around him in agitation. Naruto ignored the glare from the boy in makeup and raised an eyebrow as the girl winked at him. He turned and saw the boy looking at him with adoration. Why dot you're so cool Naruto San said the young boy. Naruto rolled his eyes. Thanks kid, so what did you do asked Naruto, the boy blinked, slightly. Um dot I am late for lunch with my gramps, and I bumped into pajama guy said the young boy. Naruto sighed and held his hand out to the boy where were you going to eat? Asked Naruto the boy looked at the hand suspiciously um dot Ichiraku ramen said the boy. Naruto nodded, he shook his hand impatiently. The boy took a step back slightly. Naruto sighed and reached forward, clasping the boy's hand he threw him onto his back. The boy looked at Naruto in shock and slight fear. Hold on commanded Naruto, and in a blur Naruto landed on a lamppost. The young boy had his eyes wide. T dot that was totally awesome, again said the boy with laughter, his arms fisting Naruto's coat tightly. Okay then said Naruto, the boy watched as Naruto crouched, his hand touching the lamppost, he did a little jump upwards and the boy watched as the world blurred, they landed on a building, Naruto repeated the process of touching the ground and doing a small jump and they would disappear once again. They landed outside of Ichiraku's, dust on the ground blowing outwards slightly, Naruto straightened and felt the boy shaking slightly. Naruto turned his head slightly, what he saw made him smirk, the boy's mouth was wide. Ah uh, Naruto what are you dot Konohamaru called Sarutobi, as he stepped out of Ichiraku, Naruto just gave Sarutobi a cool look. I was just bringing this brat to see his gramps, 
He asked me to go fast again so I did said Naruto, Sarutobi stepped forward in shock and pulled the frozen Konohamaru off Naruto, you shouldn't go your fastest, others bodies aren't used to traveling at such speeds, said Sarutobi, Naruto shrugged. Are you gonna tell his gramp or should I said Naruto calmly? Sarutobi smirked. I already know and let's just say, his gramp is annoyed said Sarutobi, Naruto smirked slightly. So this brat is related to you, I didn't think Asuma sensei had any kids said Naruto, Sarutobi sighed. No this is a product of my other son said Sarutobi. Naruto raised an eyebrow. Product? Question Naruto, Sarutobi chuckled. He is quite a handful in fact he hasn't been this quiet ever chuckled Sarutobi, Naruto sighed and turned to walk away. Oh quick question, and I know this is from a while ago but what happened to my apartment? With everything that happened I didn't get a chance to ask that Naruto. Sarutobi's face darkened. Three ninja thought it would be good to torch the place, hoping you were inside, thankfully you were away. I had them killed and the place was just left as it was, serving as a reminder that arrogance will not be tolerated. Don't worry not many people knew it was your residence said Sarutobi, Naruto sighed. But the writing on the wall asked Naruto, Sarutobi sighed. Chakra infused blood of a poor fox kit. Thankfully it slowly washed away, but no amount of scrubbing could get rid of it on the day of so after a long thought I decided to just tear down the building said Sarutobi. Naruto felt the QB growl in anger. Naruto nodded and walked away, Konohamaru's glassy eyes focused slightly. Ah uh, Gramps who is Naruto, he was so cool said Konohamaru in excitement, Sarutobi sighed and felt a headache ghost through his head. Question Sarutobi, Konohamaru smirked. I'm going to get him to train me said Konohamaru. Sarutobi sighed and put Konohamaru onto the ground. He moved into Ichiraku. He watched as Konohamaru crouched on the ground slightly, his hand touching the floor. He jumped forward and crashed into the table inside Ichiraku. Sarutobi shook his head as Konohamaru clutched his head on the ground. Naruto, look what you have started, thought Sarutobi in exasperation. Naruto walked through the library with a tuneless whistle leaving his lips. Members of the public simply shushed him and carried on browsing. Naruto's hands were in his pockets as his eyes moved over the rows and rows of books. He walked towards the nature section when he held out his arms as Hinata bumped into him, she looked up in shock and then flushed instantly. Na.Naruto-kun, hello she whispered, Naruto smiled slightly and steadied her. Careful which way you walk Hinata-chan said Naruto simply. Hinata nodded and looked at the books in her hands, Naruto's eyes drifted down, to which they read courage, surviving in the ninja world and how to gain confidence in oneself Naruto rolled his eyes and plucked the books out of her grasp and dot no whispered Hinata. Naruto sighed and placed the books on a table close by follow me Hinata Chan said Naruto and without a look back he walked towards the door, Hinata wordlessly followed him and as she exited the library she watched as he moved to the alleyway close by, Hinata dashed quickly not wanting to lose sight and lest she have to use the Byakugan. As she got into the alley, she blinked as Naruto was crackling with yellow lightning, his hand held out, his face was soft and calm. WH. Where are we going? whispered Hinata. Naruto smiled slightly. I'm going to help you gain courage, said Naruto. Hinata was wary as her shaking hand slid into his. Hinata blinked as the wind blew at her, she clutched at Naruto's black coat, her body flushed against his. They were both stood on the highest spike of the fourth Hokaye stone hair. The village looked tiny beneath them. And Naruto-kun whispered Hinata, though it was lost on Naruto as the harsh wind blew at them. Naruto's coat blew wildly in the wind making him look like a specter. Hinata, think of the harsh wind, rushing over the village, how it just flows hidden to those below said Naruto. His voice was echoing in her head. It was like he was the only thing she could hear, the wind had become muted. And Naruto-kun she stuttered. Naruto smiled slightly. The wind is so free, moving wherever it desires, Swallowing up everything in its path Naruto said, his arms clutched around Hinata, Hinata noticed the closeness of their bodies, she blushed and felt her vision swim. Ko dot courage. Naruto? Question Hinata, Naruto seemed to blink out of his daze. You are strong Hinata, people think because you are quiet, you are weak. You are not believe me said Naruto, Hinata frowned slightly. Naruto, I am weak, my clan, and my team. Everyone thinks it, I hate it. We have been entered for the Chunin exams, and I don't feel ready at all said Hinata, Naruto frowned slightly. Your team do not think that Hinata said Naruto. Hinata shook her head as tears sprang in her eyes. Naruto I am weak, I was saved on our last mission, I could do nothing. I don't know why anyone bothers said Hinata, Naruto felt a small scowl fall onto his face, someone had clearly made this kind girl lose any sense of self she had. Hinata blinked in shock as she found herself at the training grounds, 
Naruto was stood a meter away, his hair covering his boat head. Spar with me Hinata said Naruto simply, his hands in his pockets Hinata dropped into the Hyuga stance, and with a dash she attempted to close off Naruto's Tenketsu. Naruto dodged each of her strikes effortlessly, his body was moving lively through each attack she sent forward, Naruto pulled out his hand and began slapping away her strikes. Hinata was becoming quickly downhearted, she was hoping to show Naruto how much she had improved even slightly, her body set to automatically show Naruto she was worthy, only for him to simply hit away her attacks. They continued for an hour Hinata was tiring quickly, she was saddened by how easy Naruto was deflecting her blow. She sent a strike out Naruto caught her elbow slightly. You aren't attacking aggressively enough said Naruto simply, Hinata nodded with a blush and put more force behind her attacks. Naruto spun slightly, the blow sliding past his chest. Hinata's hair blew slightly as Naruto turned into a blur, Hinata blinked as a kunai slid beneath her neck. And Naruto-kun gasped Hinata shocked. Naruto blurred once more, he stood in front of her with an apology in his eyes, his face calm. Sorry I wanted to show you how much your attacks are lacking in strength said Naruto simply, Hinata felt crushed slightly, her father's words echoed through her head. Weak, you will amount to nothing echoed his voice harshly, Hinata felt tears slide down her cheeks. She watched as Naruto's eyes grew wide, understanding within his silver eyes. Hinata-chan I didn't mean it like that, you don't attack, you lack confidence, your skill is amazing, believe me, I am trying to show you aren't weak said Naruto softly, Hinata shook slightly, her sleeves moving to her face to wipe away her tears. S. Sorry. I. I. Really am weak whispered Hinata, Naruto sighed in exasperation. He remembered his grandfather giving him an ultimatum, a means to drive himself. Hinata, you want to be my friend, then you will hit me, you have half an hour, if you don't hit me. I won't ever want to talk to you again, said Naruto calmly. Hinata felt her heart shudder, sadness racked through her body. Tears flew freely down her face. Yes, sorry. I. I stuttered Hinata. Naruto just stood uncaring. If you won't attack me, I will attack first, said Naruto. Hinata blinked in shock. She was hit backwards, her legs collapsing beneath her. Naruto looked down on her, his eyes cold. Hinata felt someone pull her up harshly, she looked into Naruto's ice-cool gaze with a whimper. Come one Hinata-chan, fight through it Naruto thought in his head, he was careful not to show the emotion in his eyes. Hinata felt her heart shatter as Naruto simply dropped her. Not worth my time said Naruto harshly, Hinata cried, Naruto walked through the tree line, his eyes sad. He dot he left me, all alone. He's right I'm not worth his time, but all those times he was kind. Was it just a lie thought Hinata with sadness. Hinata-chan, please call me back, I don't think I can walk away thought Naruto. His heart aching in a way he did not recognize na dot Naruto wait she called. Her voice steadying, Naruto walked through the tree line, his face cold. What said Naruto? Hinata dropped into her clan stance. Come she said, her voice wobbling slightly, Naruto smirked and blurred. Hinata activated her Byakugan and ducked backwards slightly. Naruto's casual palm slipped over her head. She realized though with hidden horror, that if Naruto was to have hit her with that, she would have died instantly. Better said Naruto simply, Hinata moved gracefully, her hands jabbing forward harshly, Naruto smirked as he dodged the blows. I will prove to him, I will prove to him that I am worth his time she chanted in her head. Naruto swiftly dodged the blows and Hinata pushed forward, Naruto smirked as a pair of fingers slipped past his cheek, he twisted his head to dodge the other, the blows were getting closer. Hinata changed her stance slightly, Naruto smiled slightly. Using my style? Question Naruto, Hinata just dashed forward, Naruto felt a strike hit his knee, it buckled as chakra pulsed through it, Hinata then thrust two palms against Naruto's chest, the chakra output exploded outwards behind him. Hinata blinked in shock, Naruto's eyes wide. I, I actually hit him thought Hinata with happiness. Naruto collapsed to his knees, his eyes blanked slightly. With her Byakugan activated she could see a deep purple chakra flow through his body, his Tenketsu opening automatically. That actually hurt said Naruto softly, Hinata gasped and jumped on him, her arms wrapped around his shoulders. Naruto felt tears hit his body. S. Sorry. I didn't mean to dot to hurt you said Hinata. Naruto smiled slightly, his face once again calm. It's okay Hinata-chan, you did as I asked, I am sorry for upsetting you said Naruto. Hinata nodded and then blushed as she hopped off of Naruto. S. Sorry, she muttered Naruto smiled slightly. It's fine, now wanna come get ramen, I haven't been there in a while, Iruka-ni would get mad said Naruto. Hinata blushed, her eyes open in shock. 
S. Sure, said he nada. Naruto smiled slightly, then his face grew serious. We should also sort out your stutter, that way you can feel more confident, said Naruto. Hinata nodded slowly. Naruto held out his arm chivalrously. Hinata blushed and looked up at Naruto's easy, but calm face. Naruto began telling Hinata the purpose for the test, Hinata felt her confidence grow slightly. Two, to her aside as she got out of the hospital, she had a few scrolls tucked. That's it for this video. I hope you all enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and follow me on my other social media accounts. Anime God here, and I'm signing off.